It's the 4th of April 2023 and you are watching the Tuesday edition of Primetime News. Good evening to our global audience and many thanks for joining us. Standing in for my colleague Joy Gorses, I'm Salima Shimwefeleni Masipa. In our top story tonight, the National Housing Enterprise NHE and Public Service Union of Namibia today reached consensus that officially ended the NHE salary increment strike that commenced on the 24th of February. Let's listen in. I would like to really thank the PSUN uh, for the spirit in which we had engaged ourselves during the the negotiation. Uh, it's something that is worth commenting. We had indeed reached an agreement uh, between uh, NHE and um, PSUN. This specific agreement had now settled um, the issues that were there and uh, as such the strike had literally come to an end. Uh, yesterday, uh, when we had finally agreed, this had ushered in a new era where the Union PSUN and the NHE will continue to uh, 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 foster a new relationship uh, to create a harmonious lab labor relations between the two entities. Uh, now and into the future and that is the reason why we are here today we have concluded the staff will return to work uh, of course uh, by the 11th of, 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 of this month Meanwhile, Public Service Union of Namibia Secretary General Matthew Hakuria has expressed his disappointment with the conduct of the Office of the Labour Commissioner. Hakuria says the office was not of assistance in dealing with the strike. In addition, he noted the union had to rely on its ingenuity to reach an agreement. Let's have a listen. Moving forward, this is what we are going to do and that is contributing productively to ensure that the company reaches its targets and obviously then you'll have more money next time when you bargain for pay rises, pay rises then you, you are sure that you have funds because you work towards it. Uh, <clears throat> one thing I can only touch on on the side of disappointment uh, probably and deliberately so is on the conduct of the Office of the Labour Commissioner. The office was not very helpful as usual in this process and uh, the union and the company had to rely on its own creativeness to reach this agreement, whereas the Office of the Labor Commissioner could have assisted in ending the strike. The conduct of the arbitrator conciliator is, it's as usual, very disappointing. We were not impressed. Had we not had the social capital and the mutual trust between the company and the union to rely on our own inner resources and creativity, we would not have ended the strike. We would like to the Office of the Labor Commissioner to play a more productive mediating role under these circumstances rather than behaving in a manner that split the two parties and further the strike and cause more harm to the process. The Roads Authority has announced the commencement of learner license testing at its Hentis Bay Namibian Traffic Information System office as from the 17th of April 2023. More on this development in this insert. The Roads Authority in a media statement said the office will commence with daily bookings for learner license tests from quarter past 8 a.m. to 12.45 and 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. from Mondays to Thursdays. For Fridays, learner license booking will be between quarter past 8 a.m. and 12.45 and 2 p.m. to 3 p.m. only. Clients will be notified upon booking of their scheduled test date, which will be dependent on the next available slot, the statement added. Inaugurated in 2020, the office has been offering over-the-counter services on vehicle registration and licensing as well as renewal of driving and vehicle licenses. Switching focus onto continental news, the United Nations Environment Program says Africa has the highest compliance rate with the Paris Agreement on Climate Change. More details follow in this report. 
Elizabeth Murema, Deputy Executive Director of the United Nations Environment Program, told a continental forum in the Kenyan capital of Nairobi that African countries have demonstrated leadership as up to 98% of them have submitted their nationally determined contributions, which outlines their country's target to reduce greenhouse emissions. She revealed that African countries have together a plethora of laws and policies on environment and climate change, which are also complementing their nationally climate-determined contributions. The United Nations Environment Programme official observed that at the regional level, the African Union has a climate change strategy for countries to strengthen local laws and policies. Stay tuned for the business segment. Welcome to Primetime Biz, where we make sense of all things business and economics. Kickstarting this segment, the Ministry of Mines and Energy on Monday announced that petrol and diesel prices remain unchanged for the month of April. The Ministry, in a media statement, noted petrol prices in Valfus Bay will remain at 90 Namibian dollars and 78 cents per litre, and the prices of both diesel products will remain at 20 Namibian dollars and 65 cents per litre. Prime Rose Harases filed this report. The ministry in a media statement said petrol prices in Valves Bay will remain at 19 Namibia dollars 78 cents per litre and the prices for both diesel products will remain at 20 Namibia dollars 65 cents per litre. The effective date of the introduction of the regulated prices of diesel parts per million in the government gazette is 5th April at 12 past 1 midnight, it said. This comes after the ministry resolved to introduce a new model for calculating the basic fuel price or import priority price for all price-controlled petroleum products. The oil industry was duly consulted throughout the review process and the new model was approved by Minister Toma Luendo for implementation with effect from 1st April 2023. In the same vein, the ministry said it remains hopeful that the situation in the oil market will continue to improve, especially for oil price takers like Namibia, so that fuel consumers can expect to have lower fuel prices at the pumps. Meanwhile, the Ministry of Mines and Energy has requested the oil industry to ensure fuel consumers are sold the right products under the correct branding at all retail service stations. Again, Prime Rose Harases filed this story. A media statement by the Mines and Energy Ministry on Monday said the selling of ultra sulfur diesel 10 parts per million under the branding of diesel 50 parts per million needs to be corrected. It also said oil importers that are importing and marketing both diesel 10 parts per million and 50 parts per million must take all the necessary arrangements to ensure that there are two diesel pumps at such retail service stations so that oil consumers can select the type of diesel product for their vehicles. These changes came into effect on 1st April after recent trade flows of petroleum products from the international oil market to Namibia showed that two diesel types are lending in Namibia, namely gas oil diesel 50 parts per million and ultra-low sulfur diesel 10 parts per million. 
And that concludes our top news segment for this evening. Up next, we have a roundup of the latest developments in the world of economics, followed by the weather forecast. Welcome to Sport Planet. The Deb Marine Namibia Premiership dominates the segment. A brace from Nicodemus Haikali was all to a magic needed to intensify Black Africa's relegation battle in the 2022-23 Deb Marine Namibia Premiership season. Let's hear more from this insert. Rounds 22 and 23 of the Deb Marine Namibia Premiership resumed on Saturday after the international football break with games played in Karasbek, Mariental, Riobot, Vinduk, Oshuarongo and Okahanja. 
On Sunday at the Unam Stadium in the capital, Tura Magic, who had a Saturday to forget when they went down 1-0 to Gobaba's base, Young African managed to collect maximum points from relegation-threatened Black Africa after a hard-fought 90 minutes of exciting football. I Kali was in scoring mode on the day as he opened the scoring for his side with a brilliant strike just 36 minutes into the first half when he found himself in a one-on-one position with a goalkeeper. His opener was enough to take the game into the halftime break with a one-goal lead for Magic. In the second half, 10-time Premier League title winners Black Africa, who are now a shadow of themselves, came back fighting and found the back of the net in the 50th minute through Denzel Housep, but their equaliser was not good enough, as Aikali once again found the back of the net from a brilliant free kick with just five minutes left in the game. The win meant Tura Magic remained 6th on the lock standing, with 35 points, while Black Africa remained 15th out of the 16-team league with 17 points. Reporting for Sport Planet, I'm Michael Madimba. Meanwhile, Black Africa coach Brian Isaacs says playing a good game is not as crucial as collecting points from games at this stage of the season. This as his team is in a battle against relegation. Hesron Kapanga filed the story. Black Africa has won the Namibia Premiership title on 10 occasions with four of those titles by Essex. They currently find themselves 15th out of a 16-team Deb Marine Namibia Premiership. The Katutura-based outfit is on 17 points from 21 matches played thus far. On Sunday, Essex told Number that as a team they have improved, but what is needed is to start capitalizing on created opportunities. The coach also added that with the resumption of the league for the second round, they added experienced and skillful players to their squad. He further stated that he is confident and hopeful that his current squad will get them out of the relegation zone by the end of the 2022-23 Deb Marine Namibia Premiership season. After round 21 and 22 of the Deb Marine Namibia Premiership, African stars are top of the log with 58 points, 17 points clear of second on the log Blue Waters, who won 41 points from 21 games. Reporting for Sport Planet, I'm Michael Madimba. Your sports roundup is up next. And with that, we have reached the end of tonight's broadcast. Thanks for watching. Join us for the Primetime News Midweek Edition tomorrow. From myself, Salima Shumwefeleni Masipa, and the entire production team, it's good night. <laughs>